There's a secret ingredient which elevates great tag team matches to epic status, and I feel like no one is talking about it. It has nothing to do with what's going on inside the squared circle, actually, just outside of it. We're gonna break it all down next, until we make it. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. Throughout my career, I've been very fortunate because I've worked in front of the cameras as a pro wrestler, referee, ring announcer, and commentator, too. And I've also worked behind the scenes in wrestling as a promoter, booker, agent, coach, and consultant. And I bring the sum total of all those experiences across, it's going to be 30 years not long from now, and I serve it up to you right here each and every week on Till We Make It. If you're down with that, then what are you waiting for? Go ahead and join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe right now. And please enable notifications so you find out every time I publish a new video. I've had tag team wrestling top of mind for these last couple of weeks. And I've been studying tag team wrestling from various eras. There have been four of them so far in professional wrestling. Carnival era, territory era, cable TV era, and the current era, the social media era of pro wrestling. And sadly, the trend over the last few decades has been a general de-emphasization of tag team wrestling. This is fairly difficult to ignore in the shadow of WrestleMania 39, which was just days ago as I record this for you. Two non-stop days full of wrestling, two gigantic cards, and between them, just one true tag team match. I'm not counting those four-way matches, those are a different beast. One actual tag team match on WrestleMania this year. Why is it that tag team wrestling is being de-emphasized, especially here in the United States? Well, in part, it's because getting tag team wrestling right is tough. It's an art form unto itself. It requires a skill set you do not inherently have if you've spent the majority of your career learning how to have singles matches. And so I want to draw into real clarity today some of the secret sauce of tag team wrestling that I feel like I never hear people talking about. And just so we're all on the same page, I want you to understand it from my point of view. When you are crafting a tag team match, you've got five players to help you in most cases. You've got one tag team of two, an opposing tag team of two, and the referee. These are your five players. And if you have come up mostly wrestling in singles matches, it's easy to imagine that the focus of the performance needs to be on what is happening inside the ring. But this ignores key elements, which are waiting just out on the apron. It's the partners who have been tagged out. And that's what I want to talk about right now. A pro wrestling ring is a stage. And if you're in the ring, if you're on the ring, if you're right next to the ring, you're on stage. You are performing. And yet, when I see people inexperienced at developing great tag team performances, a common mistake they will make is the moment that they're tagged out of the match, they step out onto the apron and they revert into spectating. They're just watching what's happening. They're not performing the role of a tag team partner. But the way that you work the apron really is the rocket fuel which can take great tag team matches all the way up to epic status. And that's why it's really important we talk about those details in today's video. I want to give you five actionable points. Three things I want you to do and two that I want you to avoid in your very next tag team match so you get even better results when you finally go home. Before we dive in, take just one second for me and leave a like a palooza on today's video. Thanks for doing that. Ready? Up first. When you're working the apron, sell along with your partner whenever possible. So as an example, let's say while your partner is taking some heat in the match, they are the recipient of one exceptionally loud chop. Well, you need to do something to acknowledge that pain. Sell, wince, indicate to the audience how much that must have hurt. Not only does this foster the idea of a connection with your tag team partner, but you are solidifying in their minds what's going on, that this means something, this has stakes, so much so that the partner out on the apron is registering what's going on. Up next, 
When you're working the apron in a tag team match, you must strike a balance between when you're very animated out on the apron and when you are laser focused watching what's happening to your partner in the ring. So when's a great time to suddenly start moving up and down the apron, turning around to acknowledge or rally the crowd? Maybe when you know your partner needs to be calling that next spot. So when they're sitting there in that chin lock attempting to communicate, you are the diversion. You're going to draw the attention of the audience by suddenly becoming very animated. And in contrast to that, when you are laser focused on what's happening, you are indicating to the audience to pay closer attention to what is happening in the ring. But there's a balance to this. It cannot be all of one and none of the other. Number three, the climax to the second act of a tag team match is the hot tag. It's the cathartic release of all the tension that's been building up throughout the heat. And building that properly is an art form unto itself. But remember, you've got five principles out there to help you build it properly. This tag team, the opposing tag team, and the referee. So even if you are out working the apron, you have a vital role to play in building to this all-important moment in a tag team match. As the hot tag is drawing near, you need to be doing anything possible to indicate your desperation to the audience. And that might mean that you stand up on the bottom rope and start bouncing restlessly. You try to get a couple extra inches closer to your partner to make the tag more possible. You need to do anything within your power to make sure the audience observing you sees how desperately you want to tag. And many of the greatest tag teams of all time, they are masters at this exact technique. Watch The Rock and Roll Express, The Rockers, The Fantastics. These guys are masters at building to that final moment right before the hot tag so tension is peaking and the hot tag actually feels hot. Okay. We've talked about a few things you should be doing when you are working the apron in a tag team match. Now let's flip that pancake over and talk about two things I want you to avoid in that position. Number one is avoid drawing the referee if it isn't building to something. You know what I mean by that? If you are out on the apron, don't just keep calling the referee over to you if it isn't building to a spot or a payoff. Someone else somewhere on the card needs that spot. And if you are just drawing the referee over to you because you don't know what else to do while you are working the apron, you're blowing that spot up for somebody else. Leave that for the match that needs it. Only deploy drawing the referee if it's building to a payoff later in the match or it's necessitated by a spot. And last on my list is this one. Be cautious about asking the audience to clap or to chant for your partner more than three times. Because more than three times, they're gonna just give up on your partner. Now, sometimes the audience will just do this organically, and that's a different thing. But if you are prompting them to clap or to chant along, you've gotta deploy that very judiciously throughout the heat. It's gotta seem organically married to when the hope spot suddenly happens in the ring. If you're doing it because you're nervous, because you don't know what else to be doing out on the apron, you will exhaust the audience from that. And then they will give up on your partner, which is the last thing you want, because we all know a hot tag is coming eventually. And you don't want that tag to end up being a cold tag. So don't burn them out. That's what I'm saying. I could really use your help. My goal this year is to reach 100 patrons on my Patreon page. If keeping till we make it a weekly channel here on YouTube is important to you, please come and support the work I'm doing. Follow the link down below in the descriptus. One will appear on screen in just a moment. It will take you to my Patreon page where you can join for as little as $5 a month. I really need your help to meet my goal this year. And tell me down below in the comments about your favorite tag team matches of all time. I'm in the mood. Let's go. I want your recommendations.